Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight we are going to be making a very easy dessert. It is mostly no bake and it is almost completely done in the refrigerator freezer. So it is keto chocolate peanut butter pie. So come along with me and let's get started. This dessert, the only part of it that is baked is the crust, and that only takes about 10 to 12 minutes. And then the rest of it is whipped up and put in the refrigerator and the freezer. So it is very easy, it's refreshing, it's a nice creamy, chocolatey dessert, and it should be something that the whole family should enjoy, especially if you like chocolate peanut butter, and we definitely do. So come along with me, and let's get started. So the only baking part of our recipe is going to be our crust and we are going to bake that at 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. So I have preheated our oven to 350 degrees for baking our crust. So I have prepared a springform pan. <clears throat> Mine is an eight inch and I have lined it with parchment paper and then I have sprayed the parchment paper with a little bit of avocado oil spray. You don't have to use a springform pan for this if you don't want. You could, because this is a peanut butter pie, you could make it in a pie dish, but I have springform pans and I just like to use them when I have the opportunity. So I'm going to be using that, but you could just use a regular pie dish or some type of dish that is around the same size as this. So our first step is preparing our crust. Since this is the only baking part of our recipe, we wanna get that in the oven and get it cooled so that we can put in the rest of our ingredients. So in my sifter, I am putting one cup of almond flour. And because our crust is chocolate flavored, I'm going to be putting in two tablespoons of cocoa powder. You can use whatever kind of cocoa powder you like. If you like the 100% pure cacao, you could use that as well, but I'm just using regular unsweetened baking cocoa. And I'm just going to sift those together into a small bowl. And sifting just provides um, the combining well of our two ingredients and also making sure that we don't have big lumps of almond flour when we go to make our crust. Before I get to the end of our sifting process, I'm going to go ahead and add our sweetener so it can be sifted in as well. I have two tablespoons of uh, monk fruit erythritol blend powdered. And I'm just going to add that in. And we don't need our crust to be very sweet because the rest of our pie is going to be sweet. It will just give it a little bit of sweetness so that it's not completely unsweetened or flavorless. And I'm just taking my sifter back and forth, getting the big lumps, tapping the sides to make sure that all of our baking cocoa got incorporated. And then at the end, you see we have some larger lumps and I usually like to just take a spoon and finish scraping through our sieve. And there is our dry crust ingredients. So now to pull this together and form it into a crust, we need melted butter. So I have melted a half a cup of butter, which is one stick. And I'm just going to combine those together to form our crust. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit more almond flour. Just to help this pull together just a bit more. Just about a third of a cup. And 
And this is going to solidify a great deal in the oven. And of course, during the freezing process, when we freeze our pie to get it to set fully. So now I'm going to spoon this into my springform pan and spread it around and get it into the oven. I'm just gonna put it in the center, scraping out our bowl. And I'm going to work this around holding down the parchment paper because the whole idea of the parchment paper is to um, make sure our crust comes off when we unspring our springform pan. But you do kind of have to hold it down a bit because it's doing its job of not sticking, which is what we want. Just doing your best to get your crust laid down evenly. And I find using a silicone spatula for this step is quite good. Just try and get your crust down as evenly as possible so that it will cook evenly and give us a nice even crust on the bottom of our pie when we unspring it. And this is going to provide a nice chocolatey contrast to our rich creamy peanut butter. And I'm just trying to spread everything out so that our middle is not thicker than our edges. And it's completely fine to run this up the side of your spring form because then that will provide a bit of a, an outer crust for your pie once we have unsprung this. And if you were doing this in a traditional pie pan, you can of course run this crust up the sides of your pie dish in order to make a slight back crust for your pie. Okay, I think that's about as even as I'm gonna get. And we are gonna pop this in a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. And that's just going to basically set it. We're not looking for uh, brownness, not that we would be able to tell with our chocolate layer, but it's basically just going to make everything cohesive. So our butter and our sweetener and our flours together. So 10 to 12 minutes, 350. So our peanut butter filling, I have softened four ounces of Philadelphia cream cheese in the bottom of a medium sized bowl. And to that, I want to add about a third of a cup of sweetener. This is monk fruit erythritol powdered. I, work, I feel that working with a powdered product, especially in making a light fluffy dessert, incorporates much better than a granular product. If you cannot find a granular product, you can always put this through your food processor, your coffee grinder, or something similar to that. And we're just going to incorporate that a little bit. So our cream cheese is nice and smooth. It really helps to have a softened product. So the next thing that we are going to add is peanut butter, of course, because this is a peanut butter pie. I'm going to be using um, Kirkland's brand peanut butter. It's unsweetened. And I have sprayed my cup so that hopefully my peanut butter will release itself a little bit more easily from my measuring cup. So I sprayed my cup to help facilitate the peanut butter's removal, which worked quite well. So I have my three quarters of a cup of peanut butter. I am definitely using creamy in this process. If you were to use chunky, it will affect the consistency of your filling. So I would definitely recommend creamy in this step. And we are just going to start combining this. So at this point, it's quite thick and chunky. So this is where we begin to add our heavy whipping cream. And we want about six tablespoons or until we get a nice,
thick frosting consistency. So I'm going to add a little bit of this and just mix. and a little more until we have put in our six tablespoons. So that is about the consistency that we are looking for. It's a nice thick frosting consistency and we're going to set that aside while we whip our cream. So I have put on my whisk attachment and now I'm going to whip one cup of heavy cream until it's light and fluffy. I'm going to set this aside and get our crust out. Okay, so there's our crust and it's just lightly golden around the edges. And we are going to let that thoroughly cool before we put our cold ingredients that we're going to chill into it. So I've put down a hot pad and I'm just going to put this into the refrigerator so I can chill it as fast as possible to put the rest of our ingredients into it. Now we are going to take our peanut butter mixture and add it to our whipped cream, and we are going to combine these two together. So there is our beautiful light creamy, fluffy peanut butter mixture for our chocolate peanut butter pie. And I'm just going to pop this into the refrigerator and let it continue to chill while we are waiting for our crust to get cool. So I have removed our crust from the refrigerator and it's nicely cool and firm. And so now I'm going to spoon the filling onto it. So we're going to take our filling and just glob it in the center and then we'll spread it out. Of course I made a mess on the side. I wouldn't be Sarah if I didn't do that. Okay. We're just going to try and make this as even as we can. Spreading everything around. So that when we unspring this from the spring form pan, it will be delightful. Okay, so now I'm going to put this in my freezer for about one hour to make it nice and firm and then we will unmold it. Okay, here we go. Into the freezer for one hour. Bye-bye pie. getting it out of the freezer now. It's been in for a little over an hour and it's completely firm. I 
I filled up a glass with hot water. I'm going to dip my butter knife into the hot water on the edge of my springform pan before I unmold it. That's going to hopefully ensure a nice presentation. for the unmolding process. Okay. I have my warm knife again. And you don't need much of this because it is a very rich pie. This should serve about 10, depending on how you slice it. Now I'm going to attempt to remove it from our spring form. Hoping that our parchment assisted in that. The first piece is always the most difficult to get out. Okay. Okay, there it is. And we're going to put it on our plate. So as a little added flourish, I'm going to be putting a little bit of sugar-free chocolate sauce on here. This is just Hershey's sugar-free chocolate syrup. Uh, you could dust it with cocoa powder. You could put a little whipped cream on there. These are just totally optional steps. But it just makes it look a little restaurant fancy and adds to our chocolate flavor. So there we are. There's our keto chocolate peanut butter pie. Hi. It's time for dessert. Tonight we are having chocolate peanut butter pie and a nice cup of decaf for you. Oh, I guess you're waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> Bated breath. Do tell us how it is. Well, it looks really rich and decadent. That's good. It's creamy. You know, CJ says it's good. It must be. It's creamy. Good. And people always want to know, people ask, do I ever say anything that's bad? And there's rarely anything that's bad. I think there are some things you prefer over others. Yes, there's some things that I prefer more than others. This is probably one of them. So it gets a two thumbs up from CJ. I like to see this come back. Okay. So, because this is not, you know, when you mentioned, when you told me what you were going to make, I was thinking it would be really thick and because of the peanut butter. No, it's almost like an ice cream pie. That's but it is frozen. really creamy. It's fluffy. And fluffy. The crust is great. That chocolate crust is a nice touch. And the drizzle of the sauce, which is optional, uh, is also a nice touch too because it actually gives it a really uh, restaurant quality uh, look. So good job, baby. You Thank pulled you. it off. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the chocolate peanut butter pie. I know that we definitely are going to with a nice hot cup of coffee with heavy cream in it. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you will know when we upload new content. We try and upload twice a week. We have keto conversations on Wednesdays. And that's where we get together and talk about different ketogenic topics. Sometimes we have ketogenic food unboxings. 
Occasionally we'll also throw in videos about what we eat. Um, we're also planning on um, starting to do a little bit of interviewing, so that's very fun and exciting, so definitely come back for that. And then on Sundays is when we release our new recipes. I have two savory recipes a month and two sweet recipes. Also, you definitely want to hit the notification bell because I'm going to be getting next month a nice four-week holiday series about Thanksgiving style baking and some things that you can make for when friends and family are going to be visiting or if you're going to be having harvest parties or any kind of Thanksgiving meal prep. So definitely stick around for that. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and we release teaser photos and we also take photographs of what we are currently eating and things that we have made previously and are enjoying again. If you need any information about this recipe, the ingredients, the macros, other nutritional information, most all of our recipes are printable. That is found on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. So head on over there for other recipe ideas and to stay tuned for the ones that we are going to be filming in the future. So please come on back, and until we see you next time, we'll see you then on CJ's Keto Kitchen.